So we're about 40 to 50 days until the bar exam. And this is a pretty tough time for a lot of bar takers. It's a time when you're probably feeling pretty bad about your studies. And I thought today I'd talk about four reasons why your studies really seem bad right now and why it's going to get better. So uh, stay with me. We, we promise to make this better by the time we're done. Let me jump right into the very first reason why a lot of people think that uh, this is such a difficult time for them. And it has to do with our perception of time and in how we feel the bar exam is in terms of its eminence uh, in, in happening. I liken the bar exam to being the Death Star. You know, at a certain point, it blocks out everything. Uh, it becomes so large that you can't see anything except that uh, particular item and event. And for many people, somewhere between 40 and 50 days is when the bar exam comes into their consciousness in a way that feels very different than it has up until this point. Now, to be sure, you knew that the bar exam was coming before this, but it was still a little ways away. And then somehow you just cross the, the month period, uh, you get into a certain uh, spot, and for some reason, 40 to 50 days for most people is when the bar exam seems like it's just right on top of you. Do you feel that way? You probably do. And as you begin to think about the bar exam being right on top of you, that's obviously a feeling of enormous pressure. It feels really, really bad, and you feel really unprepared for the exam because it seems like the test is going to happen right now. Well, here's the interesting part about that. The test is still a long way away. If you're between 40 and 50 days away, it is a very long way away. However, the perception of it uh, doesn't change. And what I mean by that is that when you get within uh, 30 days of the exam, it won't seem any closer than it does right now. When you get within 15 days of the exam, it won't seem any closer than it does now. When you get within a day or two of the exam, it won't seem any closer than it does right now. You see, you're already feeling, many of you, as though the exam were going to happen tomorrow, even though it's not. You see, my view is that it's really like uh, this idea of a solar eclipse. It gets in the way, and once you've got a total eclipse, it doesn't matter how long it stays in that spot. It's still the same experience. And so for many bar takers, they get this moment in which the bar exam eclipses everything. It blocks out any other vision. You can't see anything, do anything, think about anything that's not bar exam related. And that is really, really problematic because it's just coming at you for most people kind of out of left field. I mean, you knew the exam was out there, but suddenly, wham, it is there, and there's no ignoring it or getting around it. And I think the examiners do some uh, things that, that make that even worse. They send out the character and fitness checks. They send out the tickets or selecting your location. Uh, there's certainly more written than online. There's a lot more activity around the bar exam. And so as a result, this is the period for most people when the exam goes from being something out in the future uh, to being something that's right now, and it's going to happen right at this moment. But what I want you to understand, and the good news about this first point, is that while the bar exam eclipses your vision and it's a total blackout right now, it will not seem any closer than this or any worse than this when we get closer to the exam. In other words, you've now hit the point where the exam is about as close to you as it's going to feel uh, all the way up until the end. And you might be saying to yourself, oh, great, thanks. So now I, I can look forward to this miserable feeling for 50 days. No, not at all. It's that you become used to it. It becomes uh, something that's just part of your world, uh, like uh, uh, you know, a pain that you get, and the pain stays with you for a while, and you just come to understand it. It doesn't mean you like it, but it's there, and you're used to it. So I guess what I'm saying in all these different analogies is, yeah, it's bad, but it's not going to get worse in this respect between now and the exam, no matter how many real days there are to the test, it's gonna feel about the same. The second reason that your studies seem bad is related to the first, and that is that right now at 40 to 50 days, for most people, your skill level isn't very mature. And what I mean by that is that for most people, you are still learning pretty dramatically, even being exposed to subjects for the first time. 
Many of you are learning how to write bar exam essays or to take performance tests. You're learning the multi-state bar exam subjects. You're going through outlines and lectures and practice questions. And the truth is, you still have a long way to go to improve your work to make it a passing level. And if you're feeling like my work has to be passing today, it's only because the bar exam seems like it's imminent, like it's going to happen tomorrow. But as we said, it's not going to happen tomorrow. Nonetheless, it feels like you should be ready for it and you're not. And when that point occurs where you feel like I should be ready for the exam, but I can clearly see that I'm not, that's when problems start to happen. Now, I've done uh, videos for years talking about what we call the dreaded seventh week, somewhere between this 40 and 50 day period, um, in which we talk about why exam after exam, year after year, students have meltdowns during this week. Uh, they tend to have fights with family members. They get into uh, more uh, fender benders. They throw more temper tantrums at Starbucks. Uh, they get into arguments with their bosses. They scream at their bar exam mentors. <laughs> they, 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 they hit uh, small children and pets. I mean, you know, whatever's in their way, they just rip through them. They're sort of like the Incredible Hulk. And the problem is that it's a, it's a measurable event. We see it coming every year. It happens every year, and then it goes away. Why does it go away? Well, after you get past this point where the disconnect between the, uh, the, the existence of the exam, the date of the exam, and the way that you feel about being prepared for it, all that's going to happen from here is that your preparation level will increase. You'll get higher and higher and better and better at what you do. You'll be more effective in the multi-state. You'll be better at writing essays and performance tests. As you do that, it reduces the tension between what you're thinking that you have to do to be successful on the exam and the exam itself. In other words, as we get closer, what really changes is your performance, even though, as we said in point number one, the exam doesn't feel any closer than it did before. That reduces the pressure, it takes it off. But there's something about this spot between 40 and 50 days, when the exam has come into your vision, it's now very real, and you realize at the same moment that you're just not ready for it, and that's okay. That's perfectly normal. You shouldn't be ready for the exam 40 or 50 days out. Uh, it'd be great if you were, but I can tell you after doing this for many years that most everyone is still a long way away from being ready. Now you might say, but I've only got X number of days until the exam. How will I learn it all and know it all and get it all done? Well, the honest answer is you won't get it all done and you won't know it all. But I think there's a more compelling answer. And that is, think about the number of days from the time you're watching this video until your bar exam. Let's say that it's 40 days. Now go back in time 40 days ago. Think about your work and your performance 40 days ago. Now I suspect that many of you won't even be able to remember what you were doing 40 days ago. It will seem so far in the past. For those who do remember, if you look at your work from 40 days ago, you'll see that it's typically much less formed, much less uh, effective. Your knowledge of the law was much lower than it is today. My point is that if you've made all the progress in the last 40 days, why would you assume that you would not make progress in the next 40 days? Most people don't plateau at this point. In fact, almost no one plateaus at this point. And so you can expect to improve over the next period of days, whether it's 40 days or 50 days or whatever the number might be. When I do this exercise with my students and I ask them to go back the number of days until the exam backwards in time, most of them literally cannot remember what they were doing. And they say to me, well, that was so long ago. Well, yeah, if it was so long ago, why isn't it the same amount of time going forward? There's something about the way the human brain works, looking forward versus looking backward. It's really perverse, uh, but it causes a lot of problems for students uh, at this particular stage. So I think you should take an objective evaluation of your uh, work. You should compare it to what you were doing that number of days ago and see if there's improvement. Almost invariably there will be, and that should give you some uh, encouragement and help you get through this particular period in which it feels like you're just not there. I also think it's a good idea to evaluate your progress. Am I making progress? Am I learning to do things better? Can I write a more effective performance test? Can I do better essays? Am I getting more multiple choice questions correct? Do I know more law? Have I made better notes or mind maps, whatever it is that you're doing, uh, in order to prepare and improve? And if you can say that, I think that's a good sign. Now, I also recognize that for many people in a big box bar review, you're only a few days into your course, and so you're just beginning to get started. And that's a little terrifying, but if you think back then, that number of days ago, you weren't even thinking about the bar, and so here you are. So you're making progress as well. So don't worry so much about what your skill level is today. 
it's going to get better when you get closer to the exam. And as it gets better, your tension and your pressure and stress will actually be relieved because, again, the bar exam won't seem any closer next week than it does this week. Trust me on that one. All right. The third reason that your studies seem so bad right now is that many of you overestimate uh, your skill level coming in and you overcommit yourselves. And what I mean by that is that a lot of people are pretty cocky about what they can do. It makes sense. We were good. We were successful in the LSAT. We were successful in law school. We were successful getting out of law school. We are successful attorneys in practice. It's what we do. We are successful people. And so we just assume that we're going to be successful on the bar exam. Now, I have to say, in the last five or six years, I see a whole lot less of this than I did uh, many years ago. There was certainly a time when most people expected to pass the bar exam on their first try. Today, statistically, most people will not pass. They'll fail um, nationally uh, across all of the, the different uh, demographic groups. And so I think there's a growing realization that it may take two or three or four tries to get through the bar exam. And so there's not quite the amount of cockiness that we used to have. Still, I think a lot of particularly first-time bar takers overestimate their skill level. They think, well, I did really well in law school. I should do really well on the bar exam. You know, it doesn't correlate quite the same way. It's a different set of skills. And so once you start getting into the study for the bar, you may begin to realize at this point, 40 to 50 days, that you have really misanalyzed uh, the situation, that what you are so good at doing in law school doesn't seem to be helping you all that much uh, when it comes to the bar exam. And it's a really bad feeling. It feels like you're sinking all of a sudden, like a lead weight is attached to your foot, and you're just going down really fast. You know, this sense of overestimation is pretty common. And if you find yourself thinking right now, wow, I thought I'd be ready to do this, uh, but I really don't feel it, then take heart. It's a pretty common reaction. And in part, it's the reaction to just having so much information put on top of you in such a short period of time that it just feels like you're overwhelmed. And you'll be able to handle it. You'll get used to the uh, pattern and, and the ability to take care of it. I recommend to my students, uh, as an example, that they listen to my lectures at regular speed once, but the second time they listen to a lecture, to go ahead and speed it up to one and a half or two times. Maybe you've had that experience where you're listening to an audible audiobook, and you want to go through it quickly, and you turn the speed up, and for the first few minutes, it seems almost inaudible to you, like you can't understand it. And then you notice that your brain starts to adjust and can listen at that speed, and you're okay, and it seems perfectly normal to you. And by the end of the book, it feels like you're just listening at regular speed. I think that's a pretty good analogy for what happens to bar takers who have overestimated their skill set. This comes at you hard and fast at the beginning, and it takes a while to get adjusted to the way you're learning now. You don't have 18 weeks of a law school semester uh, to learn the material, and so you've got to go much faster, and so it feels different. Now, compounding this problem is the sense of overcommitting. Overcommit you know, when people feel overqualified or overestimate their ability, they tend to take on more than they should. And so I talk to a lot of bar takers who tell me about everything else that's going on in their lives, their jobs, their families, their community involvement. And all of these are good, and all of them are important. But the reality is that at 40 to 50 days out, the bar exam's got to be pretty high on your priority list. Unless you've been studying for six months or more, as we suggest, you're probably at a point where you're now studying pretty close to full time all the time. But if on top of that, you're trying to run a law practice, or you're trying to take care of a bunch of uh, young children, or you are doing both of those, or you've got, uh, you know, you're president of the PTSA, um, then you know, the reality is that something's going to give, and it's going to be very difficult for you to be successful on the exam. And this is often the time, 40 to 50 days, when bar takers realize that they've just overcommitted. They've just taken on too much. They've thought to themselves, I can study while the baby's sleeping, but suddenly the baby isn't sleeping so much. And the reality is that you may have to start uh, taking better uh, care of yourself, using some self-care. Uh, being willing to say no to other people. No, I can't do that. No, I can't take the kids to all of the events. Uh, or saying, you know, I need some help with uh, child care. Or I need some help here at work. I need some time off of work. Or I need some uh, additional people to, to work with me on this project. You know, your employers will use you up, <laughs> frankly, until you say no. And I'm surprised at how often it's difficult for people to say no to their employer at this point. Uh, but then they do so and they go, oh, the boss said, well, sure, they understood. They were just really surprised I was willing to put in all these hours at work when I was studying for the bar. You think? You know, sometimes you just got to reach up and speak out for yourself and say, I just can't do that. 
I can't meet that time frame. I can't do that particular project and study for the bar and be successful. Now, clearly, there are some employers that would prefer you failed the bar exam, and so you got to be careful in those situations. But generally speaking, I find that most people want to be supportive. They just don't know what you need. And bar takers at this stage tend to become very self-absorbed. They don't tell other people in their world what they need. I need help with the kids. I need help uh, cleaning the house. I need help uh, at work. I need help with PTA, whatever it might be. And as you get into that mode of asking for help, you begin to realize there's a bigger world out there and it'll be okay. You'll get past this point in time, but you have to be able to speak up for yourself. So if you've overestimated your ability and or overcommitted yourself when it comes to time, this is the moment when those two collide and it's not pretty. And for a lot of people, it just becomes overwhelming. We have a paraliminal recording that we suggest to people. It's called Overcoming Overwhelm. It's a 20 minute recording and it's great at helping you prioritize and sort out and realize that there's enough time to do the things that are priorities on your list. But I will say this, the bar exam has become too difficult. You can't study for the bar on a minimal basis and expect to pass anymore. And so you've got to make it a priority, at least from this point, uh, for the next uh, 40 or 50 days. And I think if you're not making it a priority, then you're really setting yourself up for failure. And that's not a, a predictive uh, statement. It's just a statement of reality right now. The people that pass are the people that really throw themselves into their studies. And I think if you're not doing that, you're liable to have some difficulty on the test. So say no, use some self-care, speak up for yourself, ask for help. Those are all ways you can reduce that pressure and tension. And then the fourth reason that a lot of people uh, find that their bar studies seem so bad is quite frankly, they picked the wrong bar review course or the wrong methodology in order to study. And it suddenly becomes quite apparent to you that you are on a train uh, that's going nowhere fast or a boat that's sinking or pick your analogy, but it's not good. And that is a horrible feeling. I hear from bar students uh, in other courses at this point uh, at a very, very high rate. Uh, lots of people contact me by email to set up calls. Uh, I get lots of messages online. People saying, oh my God, I'm in a big box bar review and it suddenly has dawned on me that the choice I made in my first year of law school might not have been the smartest thing. It's not su uh, supportive of the way I study or the way I learn. I thought that bar review would be something different and here I am sitting in a room watching a video with a group of other uh, bar students who are just as lost as I am. I really feel badly when that happens to people. And I recognize that for a lot of folks, uh, sitting in the big box bar review is really a very frustrating experience. Now, I know that lots of people take those courses and um, some of them pass. Not all of them, not even a majority of them, some of them pass. And if you're one of those people that's in those courses and you feel like, ah, this is not going well for me, I wanna tell you that there's still enough time to make a switch. And this is important. You know, 40 to 50 days is enough time to make a dramatic change in the way you're studying. Now, there is something called the sunk cost fallacy that I think we have to talk about. And that is the, the individual that says, but I already paid X thousands of dollars for filling the name of your favorite big box bar review. That's true. But if you fail the exam, that cost is going to seem pretty minimal to you down the road. And ultimately you are going to end up paying for a course that does what you want it to do. Now, we're not the only alternative out there, although I think after 30 years, we're probably the best alternative to the big box bar reviews. But I think it's important to recognize that you can make the switch and be successful. And one of the reasons that that can happen, particularly with our course, is that we don't require or need you to spend five or 600 hours getting ready for the bar exam. In fact, most of our students study 250 to 300 hours. And if you break that down, if you switch right now, it's about five hours a day of study. That's manageable for most people. And the reality is that lots of people switch at this point, come into our course and they're successful. It can be done. The beauty of a course that's built on spaced repetition and repetition as a learning style like ours versus a memorization cram course, which is what the big box courses do, is dramatic. You won't be spending your time making flashcards or reciting outlines or memorizing mnemonics. That's a waste of time. You'll discover that. And many people already a week or two into their big box course realize this is not for me. It doesn't work. It's not making sense to me. If you feel that way, I really want to invite you to reach out and contact me. There's a link here in this uh, video where you can reach out for a consultation. I'll be glad to talk with you and evaluate honestly whether or not I think we can help you in the time that's remaining. 
I have found that when people make that decision to jump and go a different direction, they are generally much, much happier and they're much more excited about what they're learning. Now, if you decide to stay within the course you're in, then I would suggest that you look at this point. If you feel like the course is not working for you, look at what else you can add to it. What additional services or skills or tools can be added to make the course work most effectively? When we have a student in our course that tells me that they're struggling at this stage, I often recommend to them that they consider photo reading as a way to read faster. You can read an outline in 15 minutes instead of eight hours. That's a big time savings and that'll change a lot of people's lives. I also suggest mind mapping instead of traditional note taking. It's a great way to get a better understanding of the material. In other words, there are different tools that you can use at this stage. I also suggest to lots of students that they might want to consider doing uh, some coaching, uh, t take on uh, or, or add to their course some personal coaching with us uh, so that we can help guide them through their studies. In other words, there are lots of ways to improve your work within the, the course that you're in. Now, if the course you're in doesn't offer those tools, well, find the tools that they've got and see what you can do that would work for you. It might be why you're listening or watching this podcast right now, because you know that what you've got isn't working well. And I think that's a pretty clear statement in reality that you know you need to do something different. Don't be uh, misled by the sunk cost fallacy. Don't think that, well, I put X number of dollars in, therefore I can't do anything but stay with that. Uh, because ultimately, uh, that money is sunk, it's gone, and it's gonna be gone one way or the other. And if it's gone and you failed the exam, it's gonna feel a lot worse. So I think it's important to recognize that you have the opportunity at this stage to make that switch. And once you recognize that you have the opportunity, if you choose to stay where you are, then that's fine. But at least you can understand and have the option open to you. So those are the four reasons that I think your studies seem so bad right now. The test seems like it's imminent. Your skill level isn't where it should be. It's not matured yet. Uh, you've either overestimated your ability and or overcommitted yourself from a time standpoint. And you may have picked the wrong bar review course or the wrong methodology in order to study. All of those are correctable. All of those will change uh, in time. They will all become less pressing to you uh, in the next week to 10 days. And that's the really good news about this. Just like a bad flu or a bad cold, it goes away eventually. The key is to be able to get it to go away sooner rather than later. And I hope that this message has helped give you some hope and some suggestions about ways that you can make the pain of this 40 to 50 days go away faster and become more successful so that you can make your next bar exam the last bar exam. <laughs>